Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Courtney and I'm from New Zealand. Nice to meet you if you haven't been on the channel before. In today's video, we're checking out why no nation wants to fight the B2 bomber. I have done a video, I think only one video on the B2 bomber before and that was kind of an introductory video. So we're gonna check this video out today. By the way, if you didn't know, I do have a Twitch channel where I go live four times a week at 8 p.m. USA Eastern time. So if you wanna come over there and join in on the live streams, I would definitely love that so, so much. Come say hi in the live chat. I'm gonna leave the link to my Twitch channel down below. Without any further ado, let's get into today's video. Dude. Why no nation wants to fight the B-2 bomber. Dude. Should you venture out to one of the air shows periodically held near Whiteman Air Force Base in I would Missouri, love to see one of these you may be life. so fortunate to spot one of the world's most otherworldly aircraft. It doesn't the look Manta -like real. The like B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber. It doesn't look real. The Spirit wings measure 52 meters across, half the length of a football field, and its cockpit bulges organically from the surface it's like that of a 1950s era sci-fi spaceship contrasting dramatically with the jagged near 45 degree it angles like a UFO of its trailing from edges. This angle. Why does the B2 look so weird? And how does that help it evade radar? The oh, Spirit yeah, was designed remember. late in the Cold War to slip through the Soviet That's Union's right. formidable integrated air defense network, combining ground-based radar, so surface-to-air missiles, and aerial interceptors and radar planes. Radars were a linchpin of any modern air defense system, so the Pentagon sought a stealth plane with such a minimal radar cross-section that it could only be detected at very short ranges. The Air Force's first stealth aircraft, the F-117 Nighthawk, was a promising start, but it could only carry two bombs over 900 miles unrefueled. Not far enough to deliver a strategic strike deep inside enemy they territory. Are, even these are like, what? In the 1930s and 1940s, aviation engineers had experimented with pines. flying wing designs like Nazi Germany's Horton Ho 229 Dang. and the US XB-35 and YB-49. Flying wings generate additional lift and coincidentally are conducive to low radar cross sections because their flat surfaces minimize opportunities for so, radar waves so to bounce smart. off them. The engineers. However, pure flying wings lack tail control surfaces, often leading to fatal aerodynamic instability. Ooh, the B2's design sad. came at a turning point when fly-by-wire controls were entering widespread use. These mediate a pilot's commands through an electronic interface rather than directly via hydraulics, allowing a computer to compensate for unstable flight characteristics. No, it looks like a stingray. The Spirit's quadruple like redundant system, for example, manipulates flaps on the wings and engine thrust differentially to perform turns that most aircraft would rely on tail rudders and elevators to perform. It looks like a flying stingray. Jet engines this are a common bizarre. weak point in stealth designs as they feature radar conspicuous fan blades and generate hot engine exhaust that lights up infrared sensors. To avoid this vulnerability, the Spirit's intakes are mounted on the top of the wings and funneled air through S-shaped ducts to four F-118 turbofans buried deep inside the plane. This configuration dampens both the B-2's acoustic and infrared signature. The Spirit furthermore employs secondary inlets that scoop up cold real, barrier right? air surrounding the bomber and mix it with the hot exhaust which is then expelled over a flattened titanium carbon fiber surface to further diffuse the heat signature. It's CGI. Another key aspect of the <laughs> B2's CGI, low observability are radar absorbent materials. The B2's skin is already primarily made up mostly of non-conductive carbon graphite composite mixed with titanium. That's right. The we most reflective that. areas such as the intakes, flaps, and leading edges of the wings are sprayed with additional radar absorbent material coatings which have been repeatedly tweaked over the years. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, the skin is coated with an elastomer, an elastic rubber-like polymer meant to smooth away seams, screws, or joints between different materials, which might create a chink in its stealthy geometry. They, they like thought of everything, Altogether, right? these features reduce a B2's radar cross-section to roughly 0.1 to 0.05 meters squared. Though most discreet from the front, the B2 is designed to remain low observable from all angles as it's intended to penetrate deep into enemy airspace. Spirits are camouflaged for daytime as well as night strikes with non-reflective dark gray paint designed to blend in with the sky at distances of oh. 23 miles or greater. The B-2 also sports special bays designed to release chemicals to obscure contrails, but those were never used operationally. Instead, the Spirit has a LIDAR sensor to detect contrails, giving the pilot a chance to change altitude to eliminate them. 
The Spirit is designed to fly across the globe while carrying 20 to 30 tons of weapons, it's but wild. not to do exceptionally quickly. Its turbofans lack afterburners, which in any case would cause infrared and even radar signature to bloom. The Spirit's top speed is 630 miles per hour, which means it's a bit faster than a jumbo jet, while its range of five to 7,000 miles is usually multiplied by two to four oh aerial gosh. refuelings using a pop-up hatch behind the cockpit. This has allowed B-2s to fly non-stop missions lasting nearly two days from Whiteman in Missouri to hit targets across the globe. A Spirit's cross-trained crew of two, a mission commander and a pilot, enter the plane via a hatch in the belly. The bomber has room for one crew member to nap in shifts, as well as a toilet and space to store food in a microwave. A true. Though Spirits routinely use GPS navigation, they can get along just fine if navigation satellites are knocked out by using a star-oriented inertial navigation system backed up by a terrain recognition-based system. Wow! Satellite links and very high-frequency radio allow the crew to receive mission updates, such as the cancellation of a planned target. When a B-2 bomber approaches defended airspace, it enters stealth mode, retracting antennas, cutting off certain oh communication gosh. links, and even restricting the use That's of its scary flaps. high. If threatened by long-range radars and missiles over a wide area, it may descend to low altitude to reduce detection range. Its terrain following system, allowing the huge bomber to skim as low as 200 feet above the ground. Unlike the earlier Nighthawk, the B-2 bomber is equipped with an APQ-181 low probability of intercept radar that has been updated to an even stealthier active electronically scanned array model in 2010. Useful for navigation and scanning ground targets, it can also plot the position of hostile fighters and radars. That data is fed to the bomber's APR-63 defensive measure suite, allowing the mission commander to adjust the pre-programmed flight path to slip in between areas of dense radar coverage and avoid interceptors. Arguably, the latter pose the greatest threat to the B-2. Already low bandwidth radars may detect the presence, I've but not the precise location of, of stealth Spirit aircraft. Of I do Should a hostile what fighter means. close within a few dozen miles, the Spirit would be vulnerable to visual, infrared, and even radar Is it detection. Just, like, where they're from, Lacking self-defense weapons or high speed, the like, B-2's odds of survival maybe? in that scenario would be pretty low. For its nuclear strike mission, still its most important role today, the B-2 can carry up to 16 B-61 or megaton-yielded B-83 nuclear gravity bombs on the rotary launchers inside its two bomb so bays. Scary. A Spirit's avionics are hardened versus the electromagnetic pulses generated by nuclear blasts, and the pilots are offered creepy white face masks to shield their eyes from the flash of detonation. However, the fall of the Soviet Union prompted the Air Force to hastily adapt the B-2 for conventional weapons delivery. Mm -hmm. An alternate rack system can accommodate up to 80 Mark 82 500-pound bombs or an equivalent weight in cluster bombs, mines, or larger munitions. In the late 1990s, the B-2 was adapted to carry 2,000-pound JDAM GPS-guided weapons, which are accurate within a 20-foot oh radius gosh. and have served as its primary weapon ever since. Oh my goodness. The B-2 is also certified to carry long-range AGM-154 JSAO glide bombs, 80 miles, and AGM-158 JASM stealth cruise missiles, 230 to 575 miles, to allow it to deliver standoff attacks without risking getting too close to increasingly powerful modern it's air a mini, defense radars. It's a mini plane. Most exotically, the B-2 is uniquely configured to deploy up to two massive 30,000-pound <gasps> GBU-57 massive ordnance penetrators designed to blast apart command bunkers up to 61 meters underground, a capability meant to threaten decapitation of hostile foreign leaders and destruction of subterranean weapons facilities. The B-2's ability to deliver such devastating weapons deep within the most well-defended airspace make it a premium, highly specialized war machine without equivalent. Dude. At least unless China develops a decent H-20 stealth bomber. So far, B-2s have mostly leveraged their range and payload rather than stealth for actual combat operations. However, the Spirit's awesome firepower and low observable characteristics will never be tested in the kinds of high-intensity and likely nuclear great power conflict it was designed to fight. Mm. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Are they doing repairs? Looks like it, huh? 
just casually walking along the wing. Right? I first learned about the B2 bomber, um, I think it was like two years ago when I first watched a video on this and I didn't know that this plane existed until two years ago when I watched that video. I did not think it was real. And even now watching it, like I know that it's real, but watching the footage of it, I'm just like, this just cannot be real. It looks like CGI. This doesn't look like a real aircraft. It's so bizarre. It is so bizarre. It's just so like UFO looking to me. Um, and it's so, I guess not what I would expect a plane to look like, I guess. So maybe that's why I can't really wrap my head around it. Um, yeah, it really reminds me of a flying stingray, a flying stingray. It really looks like a flying stingray. Um, I was trying to like suss out what I thought it looked like. I was like, stingray, it looks like a freaking stingray. I might be the only one <laughs> who thinks that. The amount of weapons that this plane is able to carry and offload is scary, very scary. And you know, the stealth factor on top of that, this would be absolutely terrifying knowing that the USA carries this type of plane because the capabilities of it and also you'll just never know that it's coming because it is it, it, it flies under the radar literally so um very would be very frightening you you would just never know when it's coming like you can't you cannot see it on the radar which is the amazing part and also the scary part it's amazing because the way that they designed it, it, just so much thought has gone into it, different aspects of the plane to make it less and less detectable on radars. Like they thought of everything and also scary because a lot of the time military, they um, rely on radar to kind of get a heads up on various, various things or you know incoming um dangers i guess and you wouldn't even have a clue you wouldn't even have a clue and it's camouflage so even if it was like over overhead you you still might not even see it so um yeah i'm glad that we watched this video today you guys if you guys want to see my very very first reaction to the b2 bomber like my first one ever i will put it in the um the ending the ending credits you guys can just click the link and go on over there if you do want to um but yeah that was awesome definitely sparked memory from the last video that i watched guys thank you so so much for watching with me today what do you guys think about the b2 bomber i personally think it's unreal like i i i, I still low-key don't think it's real but <laughs> I know that it is, but at the same time, I'm like, hmm, bizarre. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you so, so much for watching with me today. Again, if you do want to hang out on Twitch, on the Twitch live streams, four times a week at 8 p.m. USA Eastern Time, you are more than welcome to. I'd love to see you over there. Um, I will link my Twitch channel down below. But with all that being said, I will catch you in the next video. Bye, guys. Mwah. The store, throw down the smoke and tell me to quit. No, the sound I don't talk. And help me forget that this world is so cold. I don't even know what I'm chasing no more. Tell me what I want. Just keep searching on. It's never enough. Cup after cup.